No, Hayden, no. Okay, listen. When you're adding up two fractions so together that have a different denominator, you need to make sure that we use our equivalent fraction mm, knowledge mm -hmm. so that the denominators mm -hmm. are the same. Denominators. Then we can add or subtract really easily. I'll tell you what, why don't you explain that to me like I'm five? Five years. Okay, sure. No problem. So your straws, you've got two straws. So we're going to put them down here, two straws. And I want to add more straws. That'd be really easy, wouldn't it? Because we can just say we've got more straws. But I don't have more straws. I've got three berries. So if I've got three berries in the middle, two straws plus three berries, that's really tricky. Because when we put them together, we can't just say that we've got five... Strawberries! What? That's not how this works at all. Uh, well... Where have you got them from? <laughs> mm. Mm, thank you. I get it now. No, that is not how any of this works. Okay, so let's help Hayden understand how we actually add and subtract fractions together, even if they don't have the same denominator. So going back to basics, on the screen you can see two straws plus four straws, really straightforward, are just six straws. And if we had six berries plus three more berries in total, we'd have nine berries. And what I was trying to say to Hayden was, if we have two things that are not the same, we're gonna struggle to add them up. Two straws plus three berries equals, well, according to Hayden, five strawberries. And that is just not how it works. And it kind of is the same story for fractions. So let's take a look. So let's start off with a question where the denominators are the same. It's super simple. As you can see here, we've got two fifths and one fifth. So we can do two, plus one, and we can shade in here three fifths. Now, if we're to write that in words, we can write down three here, and notice how the denominators, when they're the same, don't change. We have two fifths, one fifth, three fifths. And if you go to the bottom, we can see it written there in the abstract way, two fifths plus one fifth equals three fifths. And it's the same for subtraction. If the denominators are already the same, as they are in this case with fifths, we can quite simply just look at the numerator, subtract the numbers, so four take away three is one fifth, and write down the fraction as so. Really simple, if the denominators are already the same, just add or subtract the numerators. However, it's not always going to be as simple as that. And this is where the berries and the straws come in, because sometimes we have to add fractions together or subtract them where the denominators are different. And as you can see here at the top, we've got one quarter shaded in and one half shaded in. So if we're adding one quarter plus one half, we have two pieces. That's not very mathematical. So what we have to do before we do any adding or subtracting of fractions is make sure that those denominators are the same. And we can do this by using our knowledge of equivalent fractions. So let's take a look at the second shape and split it in half. Now, instead of one half, we now have one, two parts that are smaller. And we can say that one half here is actually equivalent to two quarters. Now we've actually made that change in our language. We have quarters on this side, quarters on this side. We can actually change the fraction at the bottom as well to represent two quarters. And as soon as we've done that, when the denominators are the same, hopefully you can see how this question becomes super simple. One quarter plus one half has changed to one quarter plus two quarters, and we can write the answer down really simply as three quarters. Okay, so here's a question without the pictorial representation or the written out words. How can we make sure that one third plus five ninths is solvable. Well, we need to make sure the denominators are the same. Luckily for us, one third can be expressed as an equivalent fraction where the denominator is nine. What do we do to three to get to nine? Well, we multiply by three. So for equivalent fractions, we do the same to the denominator and the numerator to keep it equal. So we're going to multiply the top by three and we get three ninths. So I'm actually gonna cross out one third. I'm gonna rewrite the question underneath as three ninths plus five ninths, and the denominator the same. It becomes a really simple question. We keep ninths in the answer, and we write down the numerator, which is eight. The answer to this question 
is eight ninths. And of course, you've guessed it, it's the exact same for subtraction. So here we have a denominator of 12 and a denominator of three. I know that I can change one third using my equivalent fraction rule into twelfths because three is a factor of 12. We multiply it by four, do the same to the numerator, and we have four twelfths. So replace one third with four twelfths, rewrite your question out if it helps you, 11 twelfths, subtract four twelfths, the denominator is the same, we keep it the same in the answer. 11 take away four is seven. So the answer to this question is seven twelfths. Now there is one more level of difficulty here and it's when one of your denominators does not go exactly into the other one and you have to change both of them. So let's take a look at this question to see what I mean. One quarter and two thirds. Now. If we count in threes, do we ever end up getting to four? No, three, six, nine, no. So I can't just change the thirds. Okay, let's go to the fours. Uh, do I ever get to three if I count in fours? Four, eight, no, I'm, I'm above three already. Absolute nonsense. So what we have to do in this case is find a common multiple. We need a number that is in the four times table and is in the three times table. And the first way you can do this is quite simply, as I'm doing up in the top, is you can write out your four times table and you can write out your three times table. And you may have noticed that the first number I see in both is 12. So you know that you could be successful in answering this question by changing both denominators using equivalent fraction knowledge into 12. Now, a really quick way to make sure that you have a denominator that can be this converted for both is to just multiply the denominators together. Because if you do four multiplied by three, that's going to give you a number that definitely is in the three times table and the four times table. But however you get there, you know you need to change both fractions to have a denominator now of 12. So let's do that. One quarter, what do we do to four to get to 12? Well, we multiply it by three, as we just discussed do the same to the top. So one quarter is equivalent to three twelfths. Now, what do we do to three to get to 12? We multiply it by four. So we do the same to the top. Be careful here with the numerator, which is two. So it's not one times four, it's going to be two times four. So our equivalent fraction there is eight twelfths. Now underneath the original question, I like to rewrite it with my new equivalent fractions. Three twelfths plus eight twelfths equals 11 twelfths, and that is your answer. Right, so before we set your final challenge, be sure to subscribe to our channel because we have weekly content coming your way. Who here thinks they can solve this one then? It's one of the level three questions, the hardest ones we've done today. So you can't just change one fraction to make it the same as the other. You have to change both denominators. So if you're stuck, have a look at the rest of the video that we've just covered to see if there are any hints and tips. And if you've got an answer to this question, be sure to leave it down in the comment section below. See you next time.